Hi everybody, this is Zainab Zaytoun. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna explain the second part of trigonometry for grade 9. The objectives of this part are to determine the fundamental relations of trigonometric ratios and determine the relation between trigonometric ratios and slope of a straight line. First, let's give this notation. Uh, if you want to write cosine alpha all squared, it's also written as cosine squared of alpha. So you put the squared after the cosine and before alpha and it's read as cosine squared alpha and it's not equal to cosine alpha squared. So these two are the same but this one is different. This, this one means that the alpha is a squared while these two means that cosine alpha is all squared. Same for sine alpha. So if you want to write sine alpha all squared, you either write sine alpha between parentheses all squared or sine squared of alpha and it's not equal again to sine alpha squared. Same for tangent alpha. Now let's start with the fundamental relations. Consider this right triangle ABC at C and the angle denoted by alpha, which is the angle ABC. First, what's cosine alpha? So recall in a right triangle, cosine alpha would be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So it would be, what's the adjacent side of alpha? It's BC over the hypotenuse, which is AB. So it's BC over AB. Now, for sine alpha, it's the opposite side over hypotenuse, so it will be AC, which is the opposite side of alpha, over the hypotenuse, which is AB. Now I want you to pause the video and calculate sine squared plus cosine squared, and try to use this. So, cosine squared alpha plus sine squared alpha replace cosine alpha by BC over AB, and sine alpha by AC over AB. So, it will be bc squared, so instead of cosine squared alpha, you will get bc squared over ab squared. And instead of sine squared alpha, you will get ac squared over ab squared. Now, since they have a common denominator, you will get bc squared plus ac squared all over ab squared. Now, what's bc squared plus ac squared? Look at the figure. bc squared plus ac squared is ab squared by Pythagoras theorem right so you'll get ab squared in the numerator over ab squared in the denominator which is one so what can we conclude we can we can conclude that cosine squared of alpha plus sine squared of alpha is equal to one this is a very important relation now from this relation we can also deduce that cosine squared of alpha would be one minus sine squared of alpha and sine squared of alpha would be one minus cosine squared of alpha i wrote this I know it's easy, but I wrote it on purpose because I want you, when you see any one of these two forms, to remember this fundamental relation. The second fundamental relation. So also we have the right triangle ABC at C with the angle alpha, which is B. Now I want you to calculate or to find tangent alpha and then find sine alpha over cosine alpha by yourself. So tangent alpha would be a right triangle at opposite side over adjacent side. So it would be AC, which is the opposite side of alpha, over BC, the adjacent side of alpha. So it's AC over BC. Now for sine alpha over cosine alpha, what's sine alpha? Sine alpha is opposite side over hypotenuse, so it's AC over AB. And cosine alpha is adjacent side over hypotenuse, so it's BC over AB. Now simplify this, you can see that AB cancels out with AB. If you can't see this, just do it in the usual way. So you'll get AC times AB over AB times BC. And then simplify it, you'll get AC over BC. What can you, no you notice about tangent alpha and sine alpha over cosine alpha? They are equal. So we can't use that tangent alpha is sine alpha over cosine alpha. So this is the second fundamental relation. So this is a summary for the fundamental relations. You should know that cosine squared alpha plus sine squared alpha is equal to 1 and that tangent alpha is equal to sine alpha over cosine alpha. Now let's do some exercises on the fundamental relation. Um, so I'll keep them in front of you. Calculate cosine alpha and tangent alpha, knowing that alpha is an acute angle and sine alpha is equal to 0 0.8. So you have that sine alpha is equal to 0 0.8. Let's start by cosine alpha. So how can we find cosine alpha if we have sine alpha? 
So you need a relation that combines both cosine alpha and sine alpha. So which one of these two relations? So it's the first relation. So you will use the first relation. So we have that cosine squared alpha plus sine squared alpha is equal to 1. And you need to find cosine alpha. So take sine squared alpha to the other side. You will get cosine squared alpha is 1 minus sine squared alpha. Now, what's sine squared alpha? It's 0 0.8 squared, right? So, Because remember that sine squared alpha is sine alpha all squared. So 1 minus sine squared alpha would be 1 minus 0 0.8 squared, which is 1 minus 0 0.64, then you'll get 0 0.36. But this is cosine squared alpha and not cosine alpha. So if you have that cosine squared alpha is equal to 0 0.36, then cosine alpha would be plus or minus radical 0 0.36. Because remember, when you have x squared equal to 4, for example, then x is equal radical 4, which is equal to 2, or minus radical 4, which is equal to minus 2. But remember also that alpha is an acute angle, and we took in the previous video that if alpha is an acute angle, then cosine alpha and sine alpha ranges between 0 and 1. So I'm referring to this remark. So cosine alpha should be positive. That's why in this case, if cosine squared of alpha is equal to 0 0.36, then cosine alpha is equal to radical 0 0.36 and not minus radical 0 0.36. So you'll get 0 0.6. Now, how do we find tangent of alpha? So it's very clear that you will use the second fundamental relation. So tangent alpha is sine alpha over cosine alpha. And now you have the value of sine alpha, which is 0 0.8 and the value of cosine alpha, which is 0 0.6. So it's 0 0.8 over 0 0.6. So you get 4 over 3. Now this exercise is taken from the official exams. So x is any acute angle. Establish the following equalities. So you need to prove these equalities. You need to prove that 1 plus tangent squared times all times cosine squared x is equal to 1. I'll keep the fundamental relations in front of you. So how can I reach one plus? How can I reach one from this uh, expression? So I need to use one of these fundamental relations. Um, since we don't have cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x, so we won't use the first relation now. And we don't have any of these two forms. Remember, if you have any of these two forms, you will also use this fundamental relation. So we will start by using the second fundamental relation, which says that tangent of alpha is equal to sine alpha over cosine alpha. So I'll replace tangent x by sine x over cosine x. Since it's all squared, you get sine squared of x over cosine squared of x. So this is the first step. I replace tangent x by sine x over cosine x. Now expand, so you'll get... 1 times cosine squared x, which is cosine squared x, and this times cosine squared x. Then, sine squared x over cosine squared x multiplied by cosine squared x. Cosine squared x will cancel out with cosine squared, squared x, so you'll get sine squared of x. So you're left with cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x, which is equal to 1 by this fundamental relation. So you used both of the fundamental relations. Now for the second equality, um, for sure we will not use the second fundamental relation because we don't have tangent alpha here. Now what about the first one? We don't have cosine squared or sine squared. So we won't use any of the fundamental relations now. The only thing we can do is to expand this expression. So this has the form a plus b all squared. So you'll get a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. In this case, you'll get cosine squared of x plus 2 cosine x sine x plus sine squared of x and you have minus 2 cosine x sine x so here the ex here's the expanded form cosine squared x plus 2 cosine x sine x plus sine squared of x minus 2 cosine x sine x now 2 cosine x sine x will cancel out with minus 2 cosine x sine x and you're left with cosine squared of x plus sine squared of x Using the first fundamental relation, this will give you 1. So you're done. This is also another exercise taken from the official exams. Alpha is an acute angle. Prove this equality. So again, I put the fundamental relations in front of you. So how can we reach sine squared of alpha? Do you remember this form, 1 minus sine squared of alpha? 
I told you when you when you see one minus sine squared of alpha or one minus cosine squared of alpha, you should know that you can use the first fundamental relation. And this is why I wrote them here. So when you have one minus sine squared of alpha, it's cosine squared alpha from this relation. You just take sine squared to the other side. And if you have one minus cosine squared alpha, it's sine squared alpha also by this relation. So let's go back to the exercise. So instead of 1 minus sine squared of alpha, I can place cosine squared of alpha. Now, if I get cosine squared of alpha times tangent squared of alpha, I didn't reach the answer I want. So what, what else can I do? Instead of tangent alpha, I can use the second fundamental relation, which says that tangent of alpha is sine alpha over cosine alpha. So I also replace tangent alpha by sine, sine alpha over cosine alpha. Since it's a squared, I'll get sine squared alpha over cosine squared alpha. So instead of 1 minus sine squared, I put cosine squared of alpha. Now, instead of tangent squared of alpha, I'll get sine squared of alpha over cosine squared of alpha using the second fundamental relation. Then cosine squared of alpha will cancel out with cosine squared of alpha and I'm left with sine squared of alpha, and it's proved. Now we still have the relation between the trigonometric ratios and the slope of the straight line. So let D be a straight line in an orthonormal system, and alpha is the acute angle formed by D and the x-axis. Let M be the slope of D. So M is the slope of the straight line, and alpha is the acute angle formed by the straight line and the x-axis. Now, if the line D is increasing, or the slope is positive, since as you recall from the chapter of coordinate system, if the straight line is increasing, then the slope is positive. So if the slope is positive or D is increasing, then M is equal to tangent alpha. And if D is decreasing or M is negative, then M would be minus tangent of alpha. Now, this is a direct application. It's taken from al Ahliya book. Calculate the acute angle alpha that's formed between the x x prime x, which is the x-axis, and the line D of equation y equal radical 3x minus 1. So what uh, relates between this angle alpha and a straight line? So what we just took, so in this case, the slope of this straight line is positive, which is radical 3. So the slope, which is m here, is equal to tangent alpha. So tangent alpha is equal to the slope of the straight line, which is radical 3. So tangent alpha is equal to radical 3. Now how do I get alpha? Because they asked, at, they asked us about alpha. So using your calculator, as I said in the previous video, you press, you press shift tangent of radical 3, you get 60. So alpha is 60. Now, another exercise, calculate the acute angle beta that's formed between the x-axis and the line d prime of equation y equal minus radical 3 over 3x plus 2. Now, which one should we use? Here, the slope is negative. So, m is equal to minus tangent alpha, and we need to get alpha. So, if m is equal to minus tangent alpha, it's the same as tangent alpha equal to minus m, right? So, tangent alpha is equal to minus m, so it's equal to minus minus radical 3 over 3. So, here it's called beta and alpha. So, tangent beta is equal to to plus radical 3 over 3. So how do you get beta? Again, using your calculator, press shift tangent of radical 3 over 3. You'll get that beta is equal to 30. And now we're done with this chapter. Thanks for watching.